The graphic translation assignment is one of the more complicated assignments that we will work on in this class, but it's also one of the most important. It's really going to set you up to understand the process of working in all three pieces of software, but most importantly, how to use the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator to correctly draw vector elements, and specifically in this case, from sketches that we put in the computer that we made by hand. There is a template for this project. I have it open here in Adobe InDesign. And this document really just provides a place for you to keep and organize all of the different elements of this project. Like I said, this is a project where you'll be working in all three pieces of software. So InDesign is where we'll actually lay out all of the process that you did to get to the final solution. First step, I'm gonna go ahead and save this file. And then I'll walk you through the template a little bit, although I won't really be addressing how to put things in this file until the end, but it's important again that you save things along the way so you have all of that documentation. So the first part has a place for you to put your first and last name. The object that you've decided to translate should be listed here. And then you'll put in the semester that you took the course. So all of that can be done through the text tool. Then we have the places where you'll put the source imagery. So there should be one image here of the source material that you use. There's also a name layer and you'll notice you can't edit that name layer. That actually lives on the master page in InDesign, which is a place where you can put something that will appear on all of the pages. So you actually need to click up here to change that. So I recommend doing that early on in the assignment so that you're able to have that correctly put in and it will appear on all of those pages. Once you do it once, you'll notice that all of the pages now have that content. And if you need to edit it again, again, it's up here, this A master. Here's a place where you're gonna put the black and white image, which I'll show you how to do. Then there's a place where you'll put the threshold image, the posterized image, your hand-drawn sketches, which you're required to do eight. So we have eight boxes here for you to put them in. You can adjust this layout a little bit, but we're really trying to give you a good structure to follow so we keep this file organized. Here's the digital sketches that you're required to do. And then the final digital translation. So that's the general structure we'll be following. That's where things need to live in the file. You can also put your final translation on the front here. Also, if for some reason the fonts don't load when you open this file, you're welcome to use any typefaces that are legible or readable. Some kind of a sans serif typeface like Helvetica or Arial or Avenir would probably be best for this. But we're not too picky if the typefaces change if for some reason you don't have Avenir, which is the typeface that loads in this assignment automatically. So that's a little bit of how this template is set up. And again, we'll come back to this at the very end of this demo. But now I really wanna walk you through the different phases of this project so you understand how to use the software for the different parts of this project that you will be working on. The next phase will be finding a source image that we'll use for the object that you select. So you can select any object you want, but it's important that it's something that people will know. We don't wanna pick obscure references to films or television shows or things that don't have a universal quality. Part of the goal here is to simplify and abstract something and make it recognizable. And if you start with something that not a lot of people know what it is, that can set you up to fail. The other thing about this is we really want to be picky about the image that we choose. I think some students rush through the image selection process when I actually think this is a really important phase of this project and it will really set you up for success. We talked about this a little bit in the lecture, but let's look deeper at what makes a good image and how I would approach this. So for this demo, I'm gonna work with a bee. So I've already searched for a bee in Google Images. So here I have some different images of bees. Bees, again, are something that most people know. It's easy to identify. I think it's a good choice. Animals can work well for this. Plants are good, flowers. It can be household objects or objects that people are familiar with. All of those things can be really great ideas to use for your source material, but you can pick almost whatever you like. I would avoid human figures. Those can be really difficult, so that's something I wouldn't do, or things that are overly complex, but it's good if it's something that you're interested in and something that you might enjoy actually going through this translation process with. So I've searched B. I'm now gonna go to tools and I'm gonna get large images because I want something high resolution so that when I bring it into my InDesign file in that template, it won't be pixelated. So one thing we immediately need to avoid is any of the illustrations. And some of them are really obvious, 
but some of them aren't. Like here's one that's actually an illustration even though it doesn't look like it. So the source material must be a photograph. That's really important. We also wanna find good angles. We don't wanna do angles that might be difficult to render. Like this is one where I don't think anybody's gonna be able to tell that that's a B if we use this particular angle. Here's another angle that might not quite work. It's maybe not the best angle to look at. It's not really an iconic view of a B that might help us render this in an appropriate way that people would recognize. You also wanna make sure that you can see the entire body of the B. Like you don't wanna pick something like this where we cannot see the entire body of the B or even if portions of it are clipped off, I guess this one has the whole thing, but you know, if it didn't, if it just had this portion that we see there, that wouldn't really work, right? We wanna make sure we can see the entire object so you're not having to invent part of it. I think for the B, either a silhouetted side view could work really well, or maybe it's some kind of a top view. I think in this case, those would be the best views. And to be honest, a lot of times those are gonna be the views that are gonna work best for the object that you select. Another tip that can kind of help you pick the right image or pick the right view can sometimes be these illustrations. Although we can't use those, they can sometimes really cue us into what might work best. Like this top-down symmetrical view of the B makes it really easy to identify. I also think it's a view that we've seen a lot, right? There's other logos that are done in this way and that doesn't mean that we can't make it unique and interesting. But I think partially in this case, it's because it's something that we're familiar with. I think these silhouette side views could work as well. In these, there's not as much overlapping body parts. I think that's what makes some of these three quarter angles tricky. Not only are we dealing with perspective, which can be really hard to render, but also there's a lot of overlap between the different body parts of the B, which can make it difficult. If there's limited overlap, it's not too bad. We can put some white lines in to show that separation. But if there's a lot of it, it can be really difficult. I actually think this one isn't half bad. It's probably not high resolution. I'd have to check. Sometimes the related content is not, but you can see that side view. I can even see both wings perfectly, which really helps. Again, I might need to add some white lines in places to really distinguish and differentiate these different parts of the bee's anatomy, but I think this would be a good view. But I also think this would be a great view. I think that is actually the ideal view, and I wanna see if I can find an image that is from that top down, if it's possible. It's probably a difficult way to photograph a bee, but I might be able to find one if I look through here. So sometimes it takes some time. Again, I do think this is absolutely worthwhile. I think spending time on this will really help you be successful, and you really wanna set yourself up for success on this assignment. You don't wanna set yourself up in a way where you might immediately not be successful because you've picked something that's either too complicated, the wrong angle, or potentially even something that isn't recognizable that no one will ever be able to recognize. So sometimes this will happen too. I'm not having too much luck finding this image. I mean, here's some that could work. Those aren't bad. I might keep those. I think I'm gonna save it just in case so I have it. Go ahead and save this image to the desktop. But I'm also gonna try changing my search terms. Sometimes that's useful as well. Maybe I'll try B aerial view. Sometimes that's a good thing to look up. So now we're getting closer. I need to turn on the large images again, but this might be the winner. This might really help me find what I need. Again, there's this great illustration, but that won't work. But let me just see what I have here. That's pretty good. But I do think the one that I found is probably the best. I'm gonna go ahead and save this one as well. This one might also help me. And so I'll call that source image B2. So you might wanna spend even more time finding this image, but I don't wanna run out the demo really just looking for images, but I think you understand what we're looking for and how to make sure that you're really picking an effective image. Once you've picked a great image, the next step is to open that up in Photoshop. So I have Photoshop open right here. I'll go ahead and bring it up and then I'll work on opening those images and we can make a choice of which one we think will work best. So here's those images. This one's pretty good. I, I still actually think that if I crop this one, it'll work best. I like how the wings are out, which will make it easier. And it sort of has that symmetrical look that I'm looking for. 
I might have to sort of invent this kind of upper right arm because I can't really see it. But I feel like I could reflect and use the left side to sort of create that. So you can tweak and change as you sketch this. That's absolutely something we want you to do, right? It's a part of the simplification and abstraction process. But the more it's set up how you want it, the easier this process will be. So I'm going to close this other one and I'll work with this image. So in this case, the first thing I actually want to do is crop this. I don't want the rest of this in here. So I'm going to go ahead and crop this image. So I'll use the rectangular marquee, come to image and I'll use crop. That way I'm just looking at what I want. This will be ultimately what you would put in that source image area. It looks pretty high resolution. It's not super high res, but I think it's going to work for what we need. I just noticed there's also a little annotation here. I'll have to ignore that. But the next step is to start looking at form. The process of doing these image manipulations will help us see shadow. It'll help us see shape. And that'll really help you when you get to that sketching phase, which is what we'll go to next. So you're required to have this source image. So I'm going to go ahead and save this when it's cropped. And then now I'm going to come up and I'm going to make it grayscale. That's another requirement. You need a grayscale image. So then I'm going to go ahead and do a save as, and I'll call this BW for black and white. I'm just going to leave it as a PNG. That's fine. Click save. So as I'm saving that black and white, this little menu comes up. I'm going to go ahead and just do large file size. I'd like this to be as large as possible. It'll look the best in the final document. I'll click OK. So now we want to go through some image manipulations. We want to look at the threshold and the posterize in particular. So we have the full color source image, which we need. We have the black and white image, which is the next phase in the template. Now we need to look at posterize and threshold. And these are really going to help us see form. They're going to help us see shading. And they're really going to help us on that sketching portion to see what's the best way to draw this be to simplify and abstract it. So the next step will be to come up to layer. And we want to create a new adjustment layer. So adjustment layers are things that we can layer on top of the original image that will modify or change that image. But then it's also something that we can adjust later on, which is kind of helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the threshold. And this will come up. We'll create a new layer. I'm going to just say threshold one. That's great. Mode normal. OK. And you'll notice over here now is the threshold. So what it did is it sort of created a silhouette for us. We can kind of now see the lines and the wings. We can see the general outline. But then if we come over here and we double click on this, this is the adjustment. We get this threshold level. And Photoshop sort of decided for us what we wanted. But I can also come in here and start moving this. And it might help me kind of see and find a sweet spot. You're also welcome to even do multiple of these. Like maybe I want one that's a little bit further that helps me see the exterior silhouette of the bee. And maybe I want some that are a little more over here that help me see other portions of the B. So there's nothing wrong with having more than one of these, but you are required to have at least one threshold image that you save. I'm going to try something else really quick. I'm going to come to this layer and I'm actually going to mess with the levels a little bit. So I'm going to delete this threshold and I'm going to come to image adjustments levels, which we looked at before on another assignment. I'm just going to play a little bit. I wonder if I can get this to be a little bit clearer. I don't want to lose any of the B, but I think if I lose some of the noise in the middle, I might end up getting a better threshold. So I think that's a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to undo just to see what that looked like. Yeah, I think that's better. So now let's come up here again to layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll go down to that threshold. Click OK. Yeah, now I'm going to mess with that threshold. Let's see what we can get. So yeah, I'm feeling like this is maybe a little bit better. We're losing some of the noise in the middle. And I think something maybe right around here is going to be most helpful to me. For this one, I really want to have more of a silhouette. It's really going to help me draw the exterior of this B. One thing to remember is that you want to focus on shapes as you're sketching. That's really the next phase. But shape is really what we want. So it's going to be really valuable for you to make sure that you see the form in a shape based mode like this so that you avoid a line. You can use lines, but lines are weaker than shape. They don't work as well in logos. If you think of most logos out there, they're bold, they're shape based because those are stronger and they work better in reduction. One place that I might use lines, though, is I might make these wings solid black shapes and then I might layer white lines on top. Maybe they even bleed out like some of the examples we saw. So it actually looks like it's fragmented black pieces. 
Or maybe I actually want to draw this as individual black pieces with little spaces between them, white spaces, because that might be a nice way to create some of that flow in this mark. But I think this is where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and do a save as again, because I really want to make sure that I have the threshold, which again is one of the components that you must have on this project. I'm going to go ahead and save it as a TIFF because I want it to be easy to put into that InDesign document template that we'll be using at the end. And then I think here I'm going to click save as a copy. That'll really help to make sure that I keep this original Photoshop document and I can continue to edit it. So I'm going to say save as a copy and it will do that here and it will create a new file for me, which is sort of what I want here. You can just leave this all the same. You could turn off the layers if you wanted to, but it's not a big deal. Here I'm just going to leave the standard compression and I'll click OK that it will make it larger. That's fine for now. So now I have that threshold, but it didn't change this file. I still have everything that I want here and I can edit it. So I'm going to come down here and I'm actually now going to delete the threshold. I think in this case I have what I need. Again, you could do another one. I don't know that it would be a horrible idea to get one more around here where I can see some of the other parts of the bee. But for this demo, I'll stop there. I'll go ahead and delete this adjustment layer. And then I'm going to come up and make another adjustment layer. This one I want to play with posterize. Posterize is a really interesting one in that it's going to look at different levels of the B. So sometimes this again can help you see shading. It's going to default to a certain number of levels, but you notice that I can move this up and down and it will simplify this with fewer levels and make it more complex with more levels. I mean, if you move all the way to the right, it's basically the same black and white image. But what Photoshop is doing here is it's reducing the number of grays that it's allowed to use which might help you to see different amounts of shading or where you might include things. So I'm going to try three. I think three is actually really good for this. I can see the different striping on the bee's body. I also can sort of see the edges and where there's places that there's shading in the bee's body. I probably won't use a lot of that shading, but I do think this will be helpful. Two isn't bad. That might be a good one to go with as well. It's very similar to the threshold and you'll notice that you can never go to one. Two is the max that you can use. So I think in this case, three is the sweet spot for me. I think this is going to be most helpful in the work that I produce. So again, I'm going to do a save as. And then I want to call this posterize. So that I have both files. I'm going to do save as a copy again. Just so I have that in case I need to come back to it. I'll save it as a TIFF. And I'll click save. So now I have all of the source material that I need. So I've created all of the image manipulations that are required for this project. And now it's to work on the sketching. So this is a part that needs to be done by hand. I recommend working with a pencil. It will be easiest. And this is where the tracing tissue that's in the supply list on the syllabus can be helpful. I think tracing on top of these things can make it easier for you. So you can do that on a tablet or a screen. You can actually put the tracing tissue on top of it and lightly trace. Be very careful not to hurt your screen though. Or you can print these things out. That might be even easier. If you don't have a printer, you could do it at FedEx. Or you could always come to our lab on campus and print these things out. And then start tracing on top. And remember, you want to start with something really realistic. You want to trace it exactly how you see it. So you work with the different modes and see which ones work best for you. But the first sketch should start really realistic and then you should be slowly simplifying and abstracting your object to idealize it, to get it closer to something that's going to be more logo-like or more icon-like. So as I do this, I might start really realistic, but then I might slowly adjust and get that other arm in there. I might make the wings more symmetrical. I might slowly make the antenna symmetrical and I also might cock its head and body to be more uniform and straight. This is one where I think symmetry will be really helpful. So those are gonna be adjustments that I make as I work on simplifying and abstracting it. I'm also probably gonna get rid of some detail. You know, maybe I don't need these little legs that are inside that are hard to see. I obviously don't need maybe some of the hair that's on the bee. You know, so there might be aspects that I remove. Maybe I even try removing some of the veining inside of the wings. So don't be afraid to, again, simplify and abstract, which means removing content that doesn't need to be there to idealize your object to make it more recognizable and then also easier to render in the computer. You need at least eight sketches that are done by hand. And again, I think tracing tissue will really help because you can do one sketch and then you can trace back on top of it again, right? If I want to reflect this arm, it might be really easy to use the tracing tissue to trace it, flip it over, and then I can draw it back on the other side exactly how it is. 
So tracing tissue is a really valuable tool we use a lot as designers. You wanna be careful not to smudge it up too much because ultimately you're gonna be photographing these sketches, cropping them and putting them in that template that I showed at the beginning of this video. So you need eight of them and they should go from realistic to more abstract and simplified. Don't forget to also explore some that are stylized. That should happen at the end, so maybe the last few sketches, you're welcome to explore that. And you can also explore the concepts of addition, substitution, and omission. So maybe you wanna come up with some arbitrary ideas of what you might add. Maybe in this case, it might be about honey, or maybe other ideas. Maybe it's about saving bees, so it might be a heart of some kind. So if you wanna explore that as well, you can do that too. So you'll need to get those sketches done, and then you'll want feedback on them. That's where we're really gonna decide what level of abstraction and simplification and possibly stylization is gonna work best. We really wanna pick one or two sketches that we'll work on and that we'll bring into Illustrator and start rendering in the computer. That process can be a little bit complex, so we don't wanna render all of them in Illustrator. We really wanna get feedback and make sure that we're working on the best one. And this is also a big process in design. You wanna start with a lot of options and then whittle it down to fewer and fewer options so you know that you're exploring enough ideas and finding the best idea. So go ahead and work on that sketching and then you can pick up with this video in the next phase which will go into Illustrator with those sketches that you've created.